and I was driven by the Holy Spirit to pull her to South Austin, Middle Austin. I pulled her and they told me if I would have been there five minutes late, she would have died. Come to find out, she, one of her two said that she was pregnant <clears throat> with my John Peter. And they were telling me, you know, you're going to have to choose your wife or your son. And you talk about fear. As a young guy, we process and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I love both of them. Fear wrapped me and hit me in a way like never before in that moment. <clears throat> After all of that, and done, they both came out okay. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and doctors were there were telling me, you know what? Well, she can't handle more kids. She can die. Five years later, Samuel Paul comes around. We were, we were doing counseling for marriage couples. She was pregnant. She was eight months and a half pregnant. Blood is just everywhere. The EMS came and picked us up. Picked her up with that. Sorry, Miss Sunday, but you are having a miscarriage. I'm tired. My wife's laying down there with blood all over <clears> on the floor. She says, What did I do wrong? <clears throat> you didn't do nothing wrong, did you? You didn't do anything wrong. I didn't know what to tell her. I didn't know what to say. But I knew God. I looked in the sky and said, Lord, you are Lord. Amen. We get to the hospital. They were telling me, sorry, Mr. Sonny, but you, you, you had miscarried for only one month. How's my wife? I already heard the story. One of the nurses comes back. She says, do you mind if I go take your wife to this other room and check it out? I said, no, ma'am. <clears throat> they go back. She says, I don't know what's going on, but there's a heartbeat. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> God is a faithful God. Amen. Amen. Well, Amen. Let fear wrap us and hold us. We'll be stuck like quicksand, sinking and sinking and sinking. But God said, I selected you, I appointed you, I picked you. Amen. He has picked each and every one of us. <clears throat> He's not a God that has favoritism here and not over there. Mm -hmm. God doesn't work that way. God equals everybody across the table. Amen. It's who you serve that's what's going to dominate. We serve fear, it's going to dominate. So I'll propel to share this with you guys. So, and we're going to go off. I was wondering what was going on. And anyway, the dictionary talks about fear. It has two, and I highlight them. <clears throat> to have a reverence of all of God. A lot of people don't believe the Word of God. They'll believe a dictionary in a heartbeat. You know? But the living Word of God, even the dictionary says that. I was like, wow, now you're good all, all the, the time. time. And then it says, too, it says, to honor or to respect. To honor or to respect. And for me, for an example, it's not in the word, it's not in the diction, I'm just throwing this in here. So this is that way we we'll got that taken care of. <laughs> to obey the leaders and the staff, mm -hmm. your pastors. When you come in, any we honor our pastors, we respect them. <clears throat> It talks about to respect your leaders and honor them. Amen? Amen. To honor or to respect, to obey the leaders. To respect, an example is I, I go to my own, my own church. I, I politely take my hat off. It's to respect. I don't believe in, hey, you take your hat off. No, no, I do it. Because it, it convicts me. And we do it, we do it in love. Whatever we do, we do it in love. Because if it ain't love to wrap around it, what's the purpose? Right. Somebody took time out for us to pray and invest many hours. For me, I know. Amen? Amen. And we just try to do what God called us to do. To do the right thing for tonight. For tonight. Yesterday's gone and tomorrow's not promised, but right now. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. What 
does the Bible say about reverence? Psalms 19, verse 7 and, and, eight, and 9. Instructions of the Lord are what? Perfect. There's no there's they're perfect. We're not gonna be perfect, but God's instruction for us is gonna be perfect. Amen. Amen. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy. If God tells you something, it's trustworthy. It's, you can take it to the bank. And a lot of times, when God tells something, a lot of stuff is going to come between us. And it's going to try to dictate, it's going to try to stop and put it. But as soon as you get the word of God, as soon as you go out the door, it's just going to come and try to sneak it from you, take it away from you. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand, God is my God. He's taking personal. He's my Jesus. That's right. I can't get you to him, but he can take you there. I can bring you a rhema word. It's your job to receive it or to lay it to the side. Because it says, shoes this day, who am I going to serve? You can't yeah. serve the devil and serve the Lord. I tried it. It don't work. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Verse 9. <clears throat> Reverence for the Lord is pure trust. The Lord is pure and just. Okay. Reverence for the Lord is pure. Lasts forever. The laws of the Lord are true. The laws of the Lord are true. Is this one right here? New King James, sorry. That's okay, that's fine. Uh, moving right along. We're going to go to reverent, uh, the fear. in a way that it can put you like in a little cocoon and you can stay there. But we shouldn't be staying in a cocoon if you come into a ministry like this. Because I'm, you get the living word from a phenomenal pastor that's anointed and gifted by God. But fear wants to say, no, 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 no. You stop it. But I receive the rainbow of word from my pastor. And he's going to give you the best. because the <coughs> That's what the Lord gives him to give to us. His best. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 51, verse 12. I, yes, I am the one who comforts you, who says, whose, whose ways are perfect. Wait a minute, excuse me. I, yes, I am the one who comforts you. So why are you afraid of mere humans who wither away like grass and disappear? What I was getting out of that, why were we going to fear somebody, a person, because they gave me a negative word, they told me something negative, they put fear in me? We shouldn't have to fear that situation. God won't move a mountain if there's nothing for you on the other side. Amen? Amen. God will move anything for you if your heart's true before the Lord. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto thee. Matthew 6, 33, it tells you, seek ye first the kingdom of God. We're not holy people that we're always on the righteous and we're, hey, hallelujah, bless the Lord. What are you doing behind closed doors? Are we skeletons in our back? Because what you keep in the dark will keep you bound. Amen. But if you bring it to the light, God will expose everything. That's right. That's right. It's our choice to decide what we're going to do today. Because the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. It didn't say this is the day that the devil has made. It didn't say this is the day that the fear has made. And that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And how do we be glad in the things of God? We hang on with the things of God. We hang out with godly people. Right. And encourage them with one another. Hey, brother, you, you fell down? Get back up. Try. Pray for a second, please. You didn't know I was going to do this. Praise the Lord. If he's, walk, if he's walking and he falls down, he falls, lay down. He gets down, I, I pick him back up. I don't leave him there. I don't beat him down. 
You know, you can do it. No, yes, you can. Because together, we're going to come in prayer. We're going to believe. God said he said he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And that's how we move forward. Thank you, Lord. We don't let our loved ones iron shoppers down. Do you see somebody that is hurting? And you know, <coughs> as a godly person, we should go up before them. Hey, brother, how's this thing going? Can I lift you up in prayer? Amen. No, I'm okay. I'm all right. And the Spirit of the Lord is asking me to pray for that individual. Right. He should come forward and say, you know what? Right. I'm receiving my blessing right now. That's right. Because it stops right now. And it comes down right now. Because there's not a perfect person in here but Jesus Christ. Amen? Because we all have Amen. fallen. We all right. have bloody Jesus. <laughs> we all have some stuff on us. The Lord has set me free from addictions, from games, from drugs. I had OD. That was May 5th of 92. I gave my life to the Lord. In 97, I backslid it. I was out for three, four years. Got into heavy cocaine and heroin. I had OD. I was gone. The EMS came up to me. He said, you know what? I don't know how you made it. I asked the Lord, Lord, if you know how the right way. Please. Yes. Amen. He answers. There's nothing too difficult yes. for God that won't do for you guys. Mm -hmm. We all have something that we can bless somebody with. Yes. That's right. They don't have to be financed. It can be a word of courage. Speak life in the situation. Amen. Yes. Amen. Invite them to Tres Dias. <coughs> Invite them to our home group. Invite them to our church. At workplaces, at HEBs, at any story, because you know what? The chances are we might not see that person again. Mm -hmm. And we take things for granted. <clears throat> yes. We grow when we give the word out. The more you give, the more God pours in. That's right. I made a commitment to the Lord, me and my wife. We do anything for the Lord. Anytime they call, we'll go to the hospital at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. We'll counsel, we'll disciple, whatever it is. Because God said, I created you. If God created me and created, me and created something like me, and I'm like, I was a mutt. <laughs> he had time out for me, he really? That's right. Lord. He knew you before he saw you. We can't even fathom the love that he has for us. Well, we can honor him by doing the right thing for today, for tonight, Lord. Let me live your life. <laughs> Let me decrease so you can increase my life. <laughs> Lord, I have some issues with my bills, my finances, my mortgage. But God, you said the streets of gold. Amen. You said you're God of all, Father. You said you're King of kings and the Lord of lords, Lord. I don't see it right now, Lord. I'm hurting, Lord. When you cry out to him, watch him take a shift in gears for you. Because you know what turns what turn God on? He's like, man, they trust me. They believe in me. They, after their faith, guess what? I got to go get them. I got to go help them out. I got to be there for them. Because they're calling on the name of all names, Jesus Christ. When you call upon the name that's above all names, guess what? Everything's going to move gears. They have to move gears. I, I was walking one day and I was seeing all these cows and I said, Jesus, mm. <laughs> so everything that's got ears to hear the Lord. That's right. God is so powerful in what he does and how he does it. He's given us a gift to hear, to smell, to taste, to walk. The living word. What more do we want? Lord, send me, I'll go. You know what, Pastor? Can you send Brother Daniel home? <laughs> <clears throat> well, Pastor, can you pray for me? I'm, I'm telling you because I've done all this. I wasn't perfect. They took time out for me. Mm. Our pastors go through so much stuff. And yet they still have time out for us. That's wild. They have a family. But you know what? You have a pastor that loves you. Mm -hmm. Man, he's phenomenal. And I'm so, I'm so honored to know him. Even how we crisscross. For example, it's like, uh, I was at Tres Dias Dia number seven. Mr. Clay didn't get to be there. And I was uh, I was intending to go to, Tres, uh, to go to number eight, but I couldn't go. He was there. So we just... But we cross, but every time we make a cross, God's there. Mm. He's, it's just, it's amazing what God does. And you know how we, we put everything out of, we blow everything out of context. Like, oh, this is, if we blow it up, we bring up this, and this, this is not even a God. Materialistic things. And I'm at fault for a lot of that. 
Lord, forgive me, I repent. Go forward now and move on. It's like a bone car, you keep going, you know? And God is a God that will do anything for us. Our, my job, I'll tell you, you know what my job is? To honor the Lord with all that's within me. My wife, my kids, my occupation, my ambassador, and this ministry. That's me. God is a good God. All the time. All the time. And all the time. Yeah. Moving right along. Let's go to Matthew 10, 26 through 28. Matthew 10, 26 and 28. But don't be afraid of those who treat, mistreat, and say to threat. Don't be afraid of those who threaten you. For the, for the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed. And it, and all that is, and secret will be made known to all. In other words, there's nothing, nothing on this planet that can pull a castle over Jesus. That's right. So when it becomes, and, and our battle is right here. For me, anyway. Because I can, I can, man, I, I battled that, and then I done drove them out on battling with that thing. We have to be quick to repent, Lord. Shake it off in the name of Jesus. And if you call it Jesus' name, I guarantee you, you forget about that. His peace comes within powerful. Amen? Amen. Verse uh, 29. Verse 28, I'm sorry. Might need some glasses up tonight. <laughs> Don't be afraid for those who want to heal your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body and in hell. Mm, that's right. I have a lot of fear. People come into my house with shotguns and machine guns. I wonder if I'm going to go out, if they're going to come get my family. And we're so prideful. When I give my life to the Lord, I will sincere to the Lord here and there. I don't want nothing more. I want you. Show me how to be a husband. Show me how to be a Show me how to be your servant. Show me how to be a good neighbor. Show me how to be a good employer. Show me how to dive in your word and understand something, Lord. Because there's something you don't know about me. I'm going to tell you before we get done. But God is an awesome God. Amen. 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 The only time he's not awesome is when we don't say it. <laughs> but he's always awesome anyway. But I don't have, I'll say it because I want to hear it. God, you're awesome. And I work at looking at me because I work at the city at the airport. They used to call me, I, I've been there for a while already, so they used to call me, they come to death. I'm all, you know, I never hit them over here in the top of the house, in a little cubby. Now I've got a whole conference room. And they didn't want me to pray for nothing, now they want me to pray for all the food. And I got a couple of guys, I get, two guys gave life to the Lord, and I have a guy coming to church now. The directors and all was there, and he goes, you know what, I need you to do this. You, know what? you don't need me to do this, because they will test you to see where you really are. <coughs> Stay firm in the things of God. Because he, I don't compromise with my wife, with my son, with my occupation. No way. I went into work, and guess what? Now, they, I never had to do this. My son's getting married, and he said, Dad, better go out. What? I was, really? And he's never asked me that. I was honored. Like, are you Moses? Oh, you're playing the play at, at, at church now. You're playing the Jesus play. They're, they're talking about Jesus' name. I didn't know the outcome of anything, but I know one thing. That God is good. He is a good God. I hang out with a lot of policemen. I, what are you hanging out with them for? Brother, God loves them too. <laughs> I hang out with everybody, and I'm all over the Middle East and, and, and at the airport. That's why I work at the airport. I, I'm here to 
before you go a long way over the other side. I try to take advantage of every opportunity that I can just to, because the Bible says it's better to give than it is to receive. Amen. I'll go to Brother Bob. Hey, Brother God bless you, man. And then I try to hit. It's like, hey, Brother God bless you. Bro, what you, what you doing? God bless you, brother. Because we all know. Growing up, I have 16 brothers and sisters. I had 11, 11 sisters and 5 brothers. I got over 65 nephews and nieces. Growing up, I was the fifth. I had maybe three others. I don't go nowhere without helping somebody. Yeah, right. I don't know what that person's going through. But I know one thing. God put me there for a reason. <clears throat> For a purpose, because nothing happens just to poof, there it is. No. It was all divine planned out. That's right. People had invested in me, because I was a mess. Mm. My wife would tell you, oh yeah. My mother wants to tell you too. <laughs> <laughs> you know? God is a good God. Amen. You know, Isaiah 41. Verse 13. Praise and worship was phenomenal. God was in the house. Isaiah 41, verse 13. For I, the Lord, your God, will hold you, will hold you at your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help. You take God at his word when that, when that try, if that fear comes after you tell him, look, you're worth at this. Because mm. the only way we're going to beat the enemy is by the word of God. That's right. We can't do it selfishly. I tried it. It doesn't work. I tried drinking. Stopped drinking for about four years. I keep right back in. I tried doing it all by myself. But hey, I went through everything. But when I sold myself real to the Lord, Things started taking place. Every, every desire, drugs, cigarettes, everything. Just one day I woke up, there no more desire for nothing. God Amen. knows our heart better than we know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, we, I like to drive everything. I don't like to know what's going to happen, what's going to take place, how you're going to do it, what's going on. And blah, 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 blah. Are you God? Hello? <clears throat> I need to get back and be at least and follow God. <laughs> I would have God go, oh, hold on, God, you're going too slow for me. Get over here. This is how you do it in the United work. I don't know, I don't know about y'all, but me. Hello, oh, that guy right there. Can you just get a hold of him? Oh, I said, yeah, show him love. What? Show him love. <clears throat> it's easy to love those who love you back. Mm -hmm. That's a win-win. Those are the ones that are cursing you and telling you everything else. But you know what? They live to Jesus. Left and right. He, he made a statement. Take up your cross and follow me. When they saved my family, when they saved me, there's nothing else I want in this world but you, Lord. I want to be a, I want to help any pastors, whatever it may be, Lord, just to love on them. Lift them up in prayer. It takes a lot. It's dedication, commitment. Because nobody say, I'll pray for you, Pastor Ray, okay. Hey man, I was going to watch the football game. Waste an hour watching sports. When we could be on the floor, well, watch over my pastor, Lord. I thank you for the rain and what you're bringing on. Watch over his family, Lord. Yeah. Father, God, show me, Lord, how to lift them up and how to lift up my family, Lord. And how to be the man you call me to be. How to be the woman you call me to be. To fear not, Lord. But to honor you in all that I do. Amen? Amen. <laughs> the Bible says, fear not. <clears throat> 365 times. Hmm, imagine that. Times every day. The Lord knew we were going to have trouble with fear. Or for me. Maybe I could conquer it. It took a lot for me. It took people to encourage me. It took people, me going to home. It took, it took a lot. It doesn't say it doesn't come to me now. It does. But I know how to, I know how to do it now. 
and I would go cry out to the Lord instead of trying to handle each other, start getting behind us and everything else. The Bible says to fear not. It tells you to. That it's 365 times it tells you that. You know, fear, when fear comes, we should keep faith into it. Fear. F-E-A-R. No, I'm not a spell it. F-E-A-R. When fear comes, and it says, hey, I'm fear, it holds you. You keep faith into it. Say, no, you know what? I got a ready word for my pastor. I got praise and worship off the, off the hook. I got praise and worship. Heaven came down. You remember, sometimes David said, I have to encourage myself. Amen? And then when you eat, expect to conquer. Don't just say, I'm going to get, no, 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 you know what? I got Jesus on my side. I'm going to get this. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, saying you've been defeated, you lying devil. I fear not no more. And you start walking and claiming what God said and spoke in your life and promised it that he promised you, that he will never leave you and forsake you. You're in the palm of his hand. You stay focused and stay tuned in and watch God do something for you. Amen. Yeah, hey, you take action. I didn't take action. But now I'm, I run to action. I'm ready to see what God's going to do now. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to hang the door. No, no, I get cut too, trust me. There's days I cry to work a lot, Lord. <laughs> but I've been broken. Mm. I don't pretend to be something I'm not. I love my Jesus. i got to have a relationship with him. In order for me to run my household, i got to be running with the Lord. In all areas. God's not going to give us more than we can bear. My mom, my dad, my brother, my sister died back to back. I went through a lot of stuff. I, people say, and I shouldn't say this, I hate when they say, well, God's just not there for me. He's not there for me. They just don't even understand. And we need to reach out to them and tell them in another way. He is. Take time out. Because a lot of people are going this way when God's going this way. God puts you in front of people for a reason and for a purpose. It's to bring Him glory. And the R. Redeem. You have been redeemed and set free. I've been set free from a lot of drugs. I flew to a land of 80,000. did a lot of stuff. sets you free, he sets you free. Our job is to maintain that power to the living word of God. Be connected to the ministry. How many? Well, I have a testimony here. <coughs> Growing up, my dad was the best body cleaner. He could fix anything in Design any kind of car, fix it, whatnot. Nationwide in Houston. We had all, a lot of us lined up, standing cars and whatnot, you know. <clears throat> My dad was a little heavy in the mafia. He was really sick. And he was a part of it. But anyway, uh, I quit going to school in the third grade. Because it helped my family. And because I didn't want to be around that environment. And I, didn't, I didn't want to see my mom and my dad fighting, my brothers fighting, my dad, and my dad fighting with his friends. And that's all I see. And I don't blame nothing on that. God is still God. We all have something in our lives. I see my father cheat my brother. Don't tell me God is not real. God saved us for a reason. All the way through the 10th grade because I was too old. And I, fear had me? I think not. Yeah. But I gave my mind to the Lord and I didn't see the day that came my life. When I started opening it, he started speaking to me. He said, He's my teacher, He's my healer, He's everything to me. And you wonder why I do the things I do for Jesus? Hmm. Got a home like no 
somebody else. <coughs> they try to kidnap my kids at H-E-B, and then they would tap it. I'm not going to do a lot of this. When somebody tried to kidnap your kids, and God spared you and saved them, mm. when they're breaking back your house, your kids in there, hey, God, you're going in the house, and what's going on? Everything's broke up. My kids are in the house. There was a shelter. When the enemy comes, God makes a way of an escape. That's what the Word of God says. So, when I go through I'm just mesmerized, and you take me, Lord. When they call me a loser, call me, I was going to be in jail, I was going to be dead. Really? You love me? I showed to you. He selected and appointed you tonight. You're not here by just by coincidence. Boop, you're here. You were, des you were designed to be here tonight. <clears throat> Your pastor loves you more than you can imagine. And I'm going to close with this if it's okay. <clears throat> Fear comes up to check on me, but still I trust the Lord for the wisdom, for the knowledge, for the understanding so I can conquer the fear. I choose to conquer the fear. I choose Jesus. What about you? Amen? Amen. If you could, can you hit that? If this, as he's playing this song, as you see right in the player that's left in the field, just remember, faith, expecting, action, redeemed, set free. You have been picked by the Lord. That's awesome. He's not going to let something happen to you. Because the Bible tells you, no way he puts a hedge of protection around you. Mm -hmm. They can throw everything at you. <coughs> and so God says, you know what? He's either working something in you or working something out of you. That's right. It's our choice to select who we're going to serve. And a lot of guys at work are putting all this stuff at work. Right, we've got four more years. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <coughs> everything is about Jesus. Yeah. If it ain't, I don't want to even talk yeah. about it. As you hear this song, and if it touches you, I would like, I would have, I would love to have the honor to pray for you if, if you want me to. If you're backsliding, if you want to get locked away, whatever it is that's between you and the Lord, you don't need to tell me. I just want to pray and lay hands on you and anoint you if I can. As you get ready to play this song, and if it, if it moves you, bless you. If it doesn't, bless you anyway. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for letting me come tonight, and I hope y'all remember us. Um, thank you for not showing me. <laughs> Just keep on doing that. It was an honor for me to come out this way. All of you guys, uh, I'll see you after this is number nine. Amen. Ladies, y'all be blessed, and hopefully next time I see my wife. Amen. Amen. Where are you from? From Jesus. No. <laughs> I was born and raised in Houston. I was in Houston for 20 years. Yeah. I've been here for 27 years. What church do you attend or preach at? Here in Austin? Yeah. At Christian Life Church. Christian Life Church? South Austin? You don't need it. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, I was there and then I met my wife about six years ago and never went back home. Okay. So here I am. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you for having me. Bless, Bless you, you, brother. Thank <laughs> you.